Hello. I found a new book I want to share with you. Mice of the Round Table, A Tale of Camelot by Julie Lu. I'm not real sure on the pronunciation of it. L-E-U-N-G. It's a interesting story. When we take the cover off, this is what the book looks like. A Tale of Camelot. Notice how tail is spelt. It's a little different than the normal Camelot. Remember Camelot? That's sort of Latin salat. And... It was as if the acorn had smacked Caleb in the head a second time. His jaw dropped open. Damperin gave his shoulder a friendly punch. You little rat, you didn't tell me you were camp competing, she laughed. Caleb's throat went dry as bone. Who slipped my name into the box? He wondered, frantic. Deverin and Warren had been training for this tournament for months. The challenges were um, notoriously dangerous. Just two years ago, a page had burned off all his whiskers in the bravery challenge. Were notoriously dangerous. Just two years ago, a page had burned off all his whiskers in the bravery challenge. And the year before that, poor Elias, the stable mouse, had lost his tail entirely. Worst of all, those who failed the Harvest Town tournament didn't get another chance to prove themselves as squires. They had to choose a different path, one that led to the kitchen with Maradam von Mandrake, the fields with Farmer Chala, or another trade entirely. There must be a mistake, Kayla whispered to Deverin. I, I didn't sign up. Deverin frowned. What do you mean? I mean someone else must have entered my name. His eyes landed on Warren. The gray mouse smiled back at him, a thin leer that lit up his eyes with cruel amusement. Warren. As Sir Owen went over the rest of the day's preparations, Caleb was consumed with thoughts of revenge. He could cover Warren's shield with kitten grease so he wouldn't pick it up, or glue his sword into his sheath, or put um, spitfire peppers into his helmet. But none of these ideas could help him withdraw from the tournament without embarrassing the family name. As a Christopher, Caleb had a lot to live up to. His grandfather was the great commander, Ivers Christopher, leader of all Camelot mice. Caleb's father, Sir Trenton Christopher, had been a war hero. Are you paying attention, Caleb? Sir Owen's voice cut through the mouse's thoughts. Caleb opened his mouth. Just say it. A tiny voice urged inside. He said, back out while you still can. Warren's smirk was so large that the corners of his mouth was halfway to his snout. A hot spark of anger ignited in Caleb. He wouldn't let Warren make him look like a fool again. Yes, sir, Caleb lied. Warren gaped at him. Clearly, he had expected Caleb to back out. Good, sir, Owen. Owen, three are released from training early to attend your morning chores. After breakfast, you will show up at your designated times for your armor fittings. Don't be late. Caleb was too spun, stunned to speak. Before any of the other mice could question him and demand explanations he couldn't provide, he turned and hurried to the tapestry hall where his chores waited. Caleb barely noticed where he was going along the way. He was too preoccupied with thoughts of Warren, the prank and the tournament he would have to face. Caleb followed a gutter path that cut across the castle gate. The secret passageways that ran throughout the castle were well known to him. They formed an intricate labyrinth from the stone foundations to the rafters, an invisible world where Camelot's mice flourished. Just as he was nearly across the gate, he felt a rumble underneath his paws like far away thunder. He looked up just in time to see four horses a bridge looking are heading straight for him. With a squeak of alarm, Caleb dashed for the nearest cover he could find, climbing into an empty feeding trough. He wasn't a perfect hiding spot, but at least now the horses wouldn't trample him. Peeking over the lip of the trough, 
Caleb watched the steeds pass, each carrying an armored two-legger on his back. There were war horses, all muscle and power, draped in red and white silks that matched the two-legger's shields, three diagonal red stripes set against a white background. Caleb recognized the crest immediately. It belonged to Sir Lancelot, the bravest and fiercest of King Arthur's knights, whose feats were re renowned among every inhabitant of Camelot. Like most of the two-legged knights, Sir Lancelot was supposedly far away seeking adventures. Even King Arthur himself had departed last month on a quest to the Holy Lands. Caleb's nose twitched with excitement. Perhaps Arthur and Lancelot were returning. So you many human knights gone. Camelot's stores were full of uneaten food. Well, this was certainly not a bad thing. The abundance of crops also made the castle a target for the creatures of the woods. The mice sentries were ever on alert for signs of trouble, especially as rumors of the Darkling's raid escalated. Studying the riders, Caleb thought that they looked like men-at-arms rather than true knights. Still, to have an arrival for once, that was news. Bringing up the rest of the group was a boy riding on a smaller pony. The lad had large ears that poked out from his white blonde hair. He was dressed in a freshly pressed page's uniform, and his jaw was set in a tight frown. Caleb was very good at estimating human ages, but he thought the boy looked somewhat around 10 or 12. Cheer up, said one of the men as he grabbed the boy's reins and tugged the pony toward the stables. Caleb ducked to avoid being seen on the trough. We're at your new home. Isn't it grand? The boy only scowled. Caleb waited under two -leggers, until the two leggers disappeared into the stables before he climbed down and scampered across the remaining distance to the tapestry hall. Squeezing under the heavy wooden doors of the two-legged chapel, he entered the nave. Caleb felt a familiar awe wash over him. Colored light shone like daggers through the stained glass windows, and the wooden pews seemed to give off a warm glow. The air smelled of aged wood and dust. Working his way up onto the rafters, Caleb emerged on a stone ledge that circled the base of the chapel's dome. The morning sun illuminated tapestries, no larger than a two-legger's palm, that hung just out of sight from the two-legger's below. Hallowed history of Cam Camelot's mice was preserved in every stitch. Suits of mouse-sized armor stood in attention between the, each tapestry like ghostly guardians. Caleb quickly set to work, fetching a carpet beater made of twigs from the corner. He beat the tapestries in a steady rhythm them as he um, went the grand wedding feast, stir nights, and glorious battles. Several scenes depicted the great wars between Camelot and the Darklings. Caleb paused as he reached the last tapestry. It showed a solemn-faced warrior, whiskers trimmed to perfection, dressed in a magnificent wine-colored cloak and gold armor. His eyes flashed with confidence as he brandished a sword side high in the air. His tawny fur and whisker pattern were a mirror image of Caleb's, right down to the small round patch of white fur on his right ear. Sir Trenton Christopher, felled at the Battle of Rickenbach River, read the fine silk stitching beneath the portrait. Beside the warrior stood a lady dressed in regal purple dress. She held a mouse-sized needle and thread elegantly in her paw. A small tingle rolled down Caleb's spine. His mother had been truly the most talented seamstress Camelot had ever known. This tapestry was the last one Lady Clara had sewn before she had passed away from sea fever many years ago. It had been her hope that Caleb would not forget what his parents looked like. Hi, Mom, Caleb whispered. Sometimes Caleb would talk to the tapestry as if his parents could hear him. Even though he knew it was silly, pretending made him feel less alone. Caleb finished his dusting and moved on to polishing the suits of armor. By now, his cheek was throbbing. He peered in his reflection in a burnished steel police plate. The bruise from the acorn was quickly purpling under his fur and turning into a nasty blotch. To add insult to injury, he also slept on his whiskers wrong and they were all askew. He tried to smooth the ends down, 
But after a few unsuccessful attempts, Caleb gave up, frustrated. He looked up at Sir Trenton's kind face. How am I supposed to fight a real enemy if I can't even win a battle against my own whiskers? A bit of oil will smooth any crinkle out. Startled, Caleb turned and saw Commander Ears approaching. The stout, barrel-chested mouse walked with a slight limp, an injury from the Great War. His golden fur was tinged at the ends with silvery gray hairs. He wore a simple brown robe, the kind he donned for when he did not want to be noticed. But something tells me that is not what is truly troubling you. It's nothing, Grandfather. I was just polishing, Caleb said quickly. Your ever's kind brown eyes searched Caleb's own. You are a mouse of Camelot, Caleb. You do not have to bear your burdens alone. Together in paw and tail, less divided we fall and fail. Remember? Every mouse of Camelot knew that motto by heart. It was even inscribed on the door of the Golden Wood Hall. Caleb nodded. He was never good at hiding things from his grandfather. My name was entered into the harvest tournament as a prank, but now I'm too ashamed to withdraw and too afraid to go through with it. Caleb confessed. He felt shame creep all the way into the ends of his whiskers. I don't know how I'll ever live up to the Christopher name. Commander Ivers smiled as he looked at the tapestry of his son on the wall. You know, he remarked, when I was a page, they used to call me Ivers Frank, faint heart. I was so shy. Once, I even set the commander's cloak on fire with a poorly placed candle, but was too scared to tell him until his fur began to singe. Caleb couldn't imagine his grandfather as a page, much less one who would make a mistake like that. Really? Really, and your father was worse. He tried to hide in a burdock bush to avoid his harvest tournament. We were removing burrs from his fur for a week. He faced the... He faced the strength challenge, looking like a hedgehog. Caleb laughed, and his grandfather placed a paw on Caleb's shoulder. Together, they looked at the Sir Trenton's tapestry in silence. You know, the knights discussed the tournament's candidates at length before we approved the list. Commander Ever said quietly, If you make the cut this year, it's because we thought you were already, regardless of whether or not it was a prank. Caleb was stunned. And why am I so scared, he asked. Being brave is not about lacking fear, Commander Everest says. If you are never scared, you will never understand what it means to be brave. Caleb pondered this in silence. He was still scared. But knowing that Commander Ivers and the rest of the knights believed in him made him feel like he might have a chance in the harvest tournament after all. Camelot needs protection now more than ever, Caleb. There is said to be trouble stirring in the east and we all must be ready to defend our home. Now, if you'll excuse me, I believe I'm late to a meeting with the Bell Towers Larks. Living so close to the soul, living so close to the sundial has made them extremely punctual. Caleb hopped up to his foot paws and gave Commander Avers a sharp salute with his tail. Suddenly he felt fizzy with a sense of purpose and possibility. Every night, Caleb thought, had to start someplace. All Caleb needed was the one chance to prove himself. One chance to show that he was a Christopher Mouse. Brave, strong, and wise. It's a really interesting story about Christopher.